Okay, so this study is uh, done with a nice team of ladies uh, from different parts of the region, um, all Egyptians. And it's, uh, we are doing a global study, uh, and we are just looking at our like, major economic indicators and how they are interlocking relationship. So that's how it will go. So let's start with um, the first, our first indicator is the disaster, and we look at it with the their frequency intensity, that's number one. Number two, how it's affected people. And number three, how damage and money paid for these damages. So if we look at these, we are having, like, flood is the first. And pay attention to uh, the, f the number of events. So the flood, and then storm, and then geophysical, and drought. So this is the most happening disaster, the flood and the storm. And then the fourth one is geophysical. And the seventh one is the drought. Okay, this is the frequency, okay, the intensity of this disaster. And we are having the, the data from 1990 to 2020. So this is uh, three decades. And these are the most decades that we are facing, and we, most of us are, uh, have seen it. And let's see the, the number of people hit. And the number of people hit, these are the death tools plus the people who are affected. So if we look at this, we have still we have the flood, but the drought moved from the seventh to the second. So if, like, what's happening in, in Pakistan is actually we are seeing how much uh, people are devastated and affected. So that's actually one of the yani, very uh, damaging uh, disasters that we are facing nowadays. And then we have the storm, and the geophysical is actually the earthquakes, the earthquakes and the volcano. So it goes to the fourth, and it's actually in the fourth if we look at the frequency. And here we go to our third uh, focus is the, uh, is the total damage in terms of dollars. And the, the world have paid until now $4.6 billion for all of these disasters. And we have the storm move up to the most damaging and we actually have seen the Florida a couple of days ago and what happened to Florida, the damage that has been done. And flood is persistent, then we have the geophysical and the amount of drought. So it's very interesting and uh, alarming. And if we look at how these uh, disasters, and we will divide them into dry disasters and wet disasters. So they are, the, the dry ones, they are fluctuating. And we have like uh, the extreme temperature and the drought, they are moving up. And some kind of fluctuation is happening here. But as, if we move to the wet disaster, look at this. The flood, the flood, and the storm is having an increasing trend throughout the years. And if you remember back to the few slides, this, the flood were having so much uh, frequency as well as the number of hits or the number of people affected. So that's very alarming. And if we compare the disasters, the wet, the dry, and the health, um, in this stage, we are working in pro progress for the project. So in the next step, we will add uh, the COVID. So things will see how it goes on after adding the COVID. So here, if we compare the wet with the dry and the health, definitely the wet is it's, it's very dangerous. It's increasing over the years, and it's alarming. 
So if we look at the distribution of disasters by continent, we have Asia is really affected by storms, and then land, the landslide, and that followed by the flood. That's the most uh, common disasters we have here in Asia. And then followed by Africa. They are having uh, the storms, the very few uh, landslides, the flood, and followed by the drought. So each continent, as you can see, has different needs. So what suits Asia wouldn't suit Africa. So as a, like for the COP27 and the policy makers and the decision maker in the world, they have to like save the world and help each continent based on their needs. And then we have North Africa, uh, North America, and definitely uh, storms is affected North, uh, North uh, America, followed by Europe. And you can see Europe. The, here we have flooding and extreme temperature. That's very clear. South America, they have less, and Oceania, they, they have less disasters. And if we look at the spatial temporal thing, and, um, and actually I want you to go back and watch and look at uh, our worlddata.org natural disasters. They have the data from 1900 to 2020. And you can press the slide and you can see how the disasters are moving throughout trees. And, and it's, it's actually from the 1970, it's becoming more and more disaster throughout the world. So I, as you can see, it's 1990, it's we have disasters, but it's, it's more of the world is covered by disasters. So actually we need to, all the countries need to think and um, restructure their economic policies to save their citizens. And then the second, uh, the second variable that we are interested in is the temperature, and it's a, it's a way of, uh, it's a proxy for climate change. So we have the temperature anomalies, and this is from the 1800, uh, and as you can see, we start to have, from the 1940, we start to have positive anomalies, and beginning of the 70s, it's becoming, we are heading to, uh, one degree Celsius above the, um, the pre-industrial um, degrees. Okay, so it's very alarming. And uh, according to the IBCC, uh, 2018, it was like we were uh, trying to have it below two degrees. And this year, no, they are saying we have to have below 1.5 degrees. That's, uh, so we are not far from this target. And we thought of having like seeing the disaster vulnerability and the income. So this scatter plot, it, this is the hits or the number of people affected, and this is the GDP per capita. And we have seen it by continent and the amount of the, the intensity of the hit. So the green one goes for Africa. They have low income and they have more hits, as you can see. And then we have Asia, and the, they are really hit by these disasters. And then we have uh, North, uh, North America and Europe, and they have the high income and they, their hits are, 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 not, uh, are not that big. So they are not that affected like, like the people who are in Africa. So here you can see the, the relationship between both. So this empirical uh, evidence is looking for Yes, we want to see the interlo interlocking relationship, how, how to distangle this complex relationship between growth, natural disaster vulnerability, and uh, inequality 
and we have climate change as a mediating factor. So it's, it's a very complex, uh, especially that we have, sorry, uh, especially that we have high levels inequality within a country can increase the country's vulnerability to catastrophic events. And it's actually, you can see it in Central America. The, when it's set by a storm, it's, it's very, the people who are in highlands, who are the rich people, they can like uh, surrender more than the people who are in valleys or near the coasts. So our contribution in this is that we are trying to see the mechanism between economic disasters, uh, sorry, economic growth, disaster and inequality, and how uh, they are affecting each other. So we want to see the direction of the relationship. Uh, is there a reverse causality? And we are looking, the, we are doing this by having um, simultaneous equation approach we have 166 countries from 1990 to 2020. So it was a big uh, project collecting data from different sources and uh, indulging them together. So we are having a panel analysis to see the dynamic uh, character of these phenomena. And actually this is the first study that has been doing this. Uh, uh, Capelli 21, they did the two equations, one for uh, the inequality, the other for disasters. So we, ha we are just working on it to have the growth and the climate in this, uh, in this system of equation. So we got the data from different sources. We, ha we had the, uh, the white, from the white, the inequality, and we had the temperature and precipitation from the climate change knowledge portal, and we had the macroeconomic indicators from the World Bank, uh, World Development Indicator, and this is a very good source for uh, the disaster data. It's the geo-referenced emergency event database. It's, it's an excellent database where you can find all the disasters by the countries and the years. So I'm um, really fascinated by how much data we have now. Um, so this is our empirical strategy. We are investigating the integrated paradigm. So we have an equation for growth, an equation for the inequality, and an equation for the natural disasters. So uh, this is a new classical uh, growth model, but we included the climate, which is the precipitation and the temperature. And we have here the genie, uh, from this equation, and we have the hit from this equation. And we account for institution quality, that's for the growth model. And for the, for the Gini, we have the hit, we have the lagged GDP, we have human development index, expenditure, and institution quality as well. So we account for the institution quality for these countries. And for the hit, it's the number of people affected. Uh, we have here uh, the Gini, uh, the GDP per capita, the lagged hit, and uh, ex government expenditure, investment, number of disasters, uh, and the the, the land size of each country, the percentage of being rural uh, population. So we did this by error component model, two stage and three stage, as well as the usual panel um, uh, models, as well as we did the Hausman test to see which is better. So this is our descriptive statistics for the different um, um, variables that we had. And here are our uh, preliminary results. And um, we start by having a separate equations for each uh, of our models. And uh, let's move to our um, simultaneous equations. Okay, so as you can see here, we have uh, the two stage and the three stage. And according to the Hausman test, the three stage is more uh, robust, yes. So here we have 
the number of being uh, people affected, the hits is significant, and it's actually increasing the Gini index. So that's uh, an interesting result. And if we look at human development index, that's very surprising and it's significant. And if any of you can like help us in explaining why uh, the human development index is increasing the number of hits. So, and it's, um, and it's persistent in the two stage and the three stage. So um, we need to think about it, why, why we had this result. And if we move to the Gini uh, model, we have uh, the, the GDP, the income, is degrading the income. It's a it's, it's very good uh, result. And uh, as well as the human development index, it's decreasing the inequality between uh, and within the countries. Uh, another result is a uh, good result is the government expenditure. So government needs to spend more to decrease the inequality. And here, that's the, the problem comes here. The number of people hit, the number, number of people affected by disasters, it's increasing our inequality. And uh, let's move to the last uh, growth model. We have the Gini is increasing the growth. And I believe uh, that's one of the theories that um, the Gini might, might not help well. The inequality might, might not, uh, it boosts the growth. So um, my friend Shireen said the, the, the Republicans will be happy for that in, in the United States. So maybe uh, we need to uh, think about it, how to get, to get over this. And uh, we have conversions here. So the initial income, it's negative, and uh, we have uh, the model, the growth has a convergence. And the investment increasing our growth and uh, we move to the very critical variable, temperature, and it's significant, and there is an increasing if negative effect. Negative effect between the temperature, the climate change is negatively affecting our growth. Uh, so that's a very important result, and it's uh, highly significant. So the conclusion here is that we, we have given a unique insight to this complex uh, interrelationship relationship, integrated uh, model between growth, inequality, and natural disasters. Definitely there has to be policy reforms to account for disasters, climate change, inequality in order to have better uh, governments in uh, countries. Um, definitely inequality uh, is a big issue and there has to be incentive uh, structure and institution regulation to help that in order to protect people from disasters. Um, climate change is slowing down growth and I totally believe like the world has saved us from COVID because governments sit down and they decided to have uh, shots for everybody on the earth to save us from COVID. So I, I totally have the positive insight that if governments decided in the couple of days coming that we can save the world from climate change and natural disasters, that can be done. So, um, so thank you so much.